poem animals written by walt whitman so children what this poem is all about the poem is all about the way the humans have shed all those values virtues ethics which are the foundation of humanity or which are the foundation of a human life if we talk about human being then we uh, then what what are the basic or the fundamental qualities which come to our mind they are of course some ethics and uh, uh, values for example love truthfulness affection contentment right so whatever the other ethics honesty simplicity honesty simplicity uh courage empathy kindness so when we talk about human beings and uh, what naturally we are you know able to think about these qualities which i mentioned here but now with the passage of time do we think that these qualities are, are actually found in humanity or do we think like the humanity has got bereft of these things don't we think like now the humanity ha uh, you know has reached the point where they are without any kindness where they are you know rarely simple honesty is a talk of the your okay contentment is not to be found anywhere now uh, you know the even the advertisements dil mange more so the point is like uh, people feel proud of saying like uh, we are now we are, we don't feel contented we don't get contented so truthfulness is when we are not contented when we are not honest when we are not simple then how can truthfulness be prevailing so love affection that is also not to be found anywhere around so the poet gets fed up of human life where there is where there is no scope for of scope for such virtues so the poet eventually wishes to turn and exchange places with animals so he says i think i could turn and live with animals so what turn is here turn is about becoming a turn is about changing place it's about exchanging place the poet is a human being and he thinks he feels like becoming animal so when the poet wants to be basically children what we have always read what we always believe in uh, that human life we get human life with great difficulty okay one becomes a human being it's not it's not something very easy okay one has to you know one has to struggle a lot this is what our you know uh, this is what we have re read or we have heard from the ancestors that acquiring human life is a big virtue but the poet says that he would be happier if he becomes an animal so what makes him say this so they are so placid and self contained and i stand and look at them long and long so he observed the pattern of human life and the lifestyle of the animals and uh, he did this for a long time and he got to the conclusion that the animals are far far more you know cool uh independent and you know uh, self satisfied whereas the human beings you know they are rarely cool calm and self contained because they always want more they are they are always you know uh greedy they are always you know uh, the ones those who want more and more they are greedy and they want more they are never se self satisfied so because they are never satisfied they always want more and more so they are rarely cool they are rarely at peace with themselves 
so the poet wants that he would feel like he would feel like taking turn and exchanging his place with the animals because animals are very cool at peace and independent or self satisfied so i stand and look at them this expression shows that this decision what idea the poet has got right now about exchanging the place with animals that idea is not impulsive that idea is not just to, he has taken instantly he thought about it for a long time they do not sweat and whine about their condition who are they here they are the animals so they do not sweat and whine about their condition sweating and whining about means complaining about so condition is uh, it can uh, it can be a miserable condition it can be a bad condition it can be about the difficulties it can be about the challenges so we cannot expect life without challenges or without hard work or without uh, difficulties or without obstacles life is just not always a cup of tea it's just not a bed of roses when life is there then there will have to be struggles when life is there there has to be you know uh, there have to be difficulties and what what do the men do men keep on complaining about the difficulties the challenges or the miser uh, miseries or the struggles they have to do so man complains a lot about his condition whereas the poet says that the animals do not complain about whatever the condition they are suffering from they do not lie awake in the dark and weep for their sins the human beings their conscience is uh, you know killed their conscience doesn't prick them when they do something wrong for the whole of the day they keep on indulging themselves in dishonest unlawful or false ways throughout the day they don't mind what they are doing because they always want more and more in order to satisfy their inflated ego in order to satisfy their inflated greed because they are never ever contented so they always want more and how will how will the more come when only they become this uh, dishonest when they indulge in unlawful activities so when they will indulge in falsehood when they will indulge in all the unhealthy ways of life maybe corruption so when they cross the limits then they don't mind what they are doing but at night their conscience pricks them and that uh, that thing doesn't let them sleep and they ask god to forgive them because when you do something wrong then you do it but later on when your conscience pricks you then you go to god and ask forgiveness so then they go for donations then they would go for a, a charity but that also doesn't give them peace of mind they remain upset because when you have done something wrong how so ever hard you may try you don't become you don't get that peace of mind once you've done something wrong the best way to be at peace is become remain honest remain truthful so the man or the man you know doesn't sleep a doesn't get a peaceful sleep because of the wrongs he has done throughout the day and he and his conscience keeps pricking him throughout the night and he keeps crying for the sins he has committed and he keeps on asking god to forgive him for the sins he has committed so he doesn't sleep at night whereas the animals they do not lie awake in the dark so the animals they don't lie awake they don't have to spend sleepless nights at night they go and sleep very peacefully and they don't have to cry for the sins they have committed because they don't have the time to commit sins they just do their job they just do what they have to do okay they just uh, uh, discharge their duties towards their life okay they follow the proper ecosystem so they they live a life which is very natural for them so they live a natural life and don't cross the limits the way man does so eventually they are able to have a fine sleep or a sound sleep at night and don't have to bother about the sins they are committing why will they bother for the sins when they don't commit it is man who crosses limit
how does man cross limit because he is not satisfied with what he has whereas the animals are satisfied with whatever they have been given once an animal will hunt for his prey after hunting after swelling it it will go and have a sound sleep it it doesn't believe in hoarding okay if some animal uh, hunts and eats he manages only for one day and goes to take rest doesn't bother for the next day whereas the human beings you know had they been bothering just about their one day present day then there would i guess there would not be any scope of you know uh, dishonesty or corruption or bribery or all if man, if man wants more and more not just to fill up his stomach for the day but because he wants his next five generations also to sit and relax got it so his you know inflated ego or his you know uh, his not being satisfied makes him this uh, you can say makes him corrupt makes him dishonest and all so once he does the wrong thing he loses the chance to have that peace of mind which will help him have a good sleep so man keeps regretting that's why man keeps on you know going to uh, going to uh, going for worship for one person or the other they do not make me sick discussing their duty to god so who are they here animals the poet says that uh, the life of animals he loves a lot they don't uh, complain about their miserable conditions they don't have to remain awake at night and have to uh, you know worry about the sins they have committed they don't uh, make the poet sick of discussing their duty to god man keeps on discussing his duty towards god man keeps on thinking or man keeps on dis uh, discussing like how much they owe to god how much they have their duty towards god how much they need to be kind and how much they need to be this or that so that they are able to serve god but the animals they don't have this kind of life they live a simple life they just wake up they do their things and go to sleep and manage for the work for the next day so they don't bother about worshiping god they don't bother about doing service to god in contrast to man the animals don't believe in serving god and why does man need to serve god to why does man need to serve god so that he is able to get it get rid of the sins he had committed in order to compensate for the loss in order to compensate for the sins he had committed he worships god so that his sins are lessened but does it happen no so not one is dissatisfied who is not dissatisfied animals are not dissatisfied unlike men not one is demented with the mania of owning things so what is mania mania is being mad okay mania is when you uh, when you are obsessed with something that is a mania when you become mad after something that's a mania okay any mental disorder is always you know it always has a, a prefix mania so the animals are not maniac about possessions animals are not mad about possessing things unlike man man is obsessed with the possessions man wants this also that also so the man has become mad for race of more and more in the man has man is basically very materialistic he is just not ever satisfied he wants if he would want one car today and after getting one car the man would want a luxury car and after getting one luxury car he might want two luxury cars and after that he might want something else so the man's desires never come to an end why don't they come to an end because he becomes mad after materialistic things but so mania of owning things who who is maniac of possessions man but the animals are not demented with the mania of owning things so animals are not maniac animals are not possessive 
they don't become possessive or they don't become obsessed with possessions of one or the other thing because they remain satisfied they no one is dissatisfied means they are satisfied all animals remain satisfied because they don't become obsessed with the possessions of materialistic things they are happy with what they have got today and for tomorrow they will manage tomorrow but man tries to go for even go for even his next 10 generations otherwise how much a man needs for his survival we can all make out not one kneels to another nor to his kind that lived thousands of years ago not one kneels to another what is kneeling bending low so not one, no animal you know request no animal appeals to other animal unlike man what does man do you, you know man flatters others man appeals to others man tries to make some people happier why does man do this why does a man try to make others happier why does a man try to flatter others when he thinks that the other person is richer when he thinks that the other person is more powerful or when he thinks that the other person is more influential in that case the person wants or does everything to flatter that person or to pamper that person or to make that person happier so that that person helps him but animals don't do this animals don't have to flatter any other animal to to get something from them because the simple reason is because they are satisfied with what they have but what does a man do man always tries to flatter the better ones better ones i mean those who are uh, economically better him better than him or those who are better than him in case uh, uh, in the case of maybe influence or something so man always goes for pampering or flattering others to to meet both ends meet so in order to get help from the more influential people man believes in flattery or even uh, bending low to any extent whereas animals don't do this no not one kneels to another nor to his kind that lived thousand of years ago number one man flatters others the ones those who are either more influential or richer and man also tries to appease the people those who lived here earlier that is ancestors those who lived thousands of years ago are the ancestors so man also tries to man also worships the ancestors why does man worship ancestors we people worship the people those who have not been here the people those who die many of those people attain the status of defi deity you can say they they try to worship the people those who lived a heroic life or the people who lived an exemplary life they are worshiped by the people today but animals don't do this they don't worship the animals those who had lived a very great life earlier but it is the only it is done by human beings only not one kneels to another nor to his kind that lived thousands of years ago so animals neither worship animals neither flatter the existing human beings those who are more influential than them nor they worship the ones those who have left this world about many years ago because these things but these things are done by human beings so the point is like why do the human beings flatter others the answer is to get uh, the help of the one who might be economically better than him or to get the help of somebody who might be more influential okay if somebody if you come to know that that person knows the uh, knows that mla of the place then you people might be up to him like wow that person is uh, has approach with him so here humanity only does these kinds of things animals don't indulge in these kinds of things not one is respectable or unhappy over the whole earth so the animals you know if we talk about the animals those animals not one is respectable or unhappy over the whole earth 
so all those animals you know they, they they live a life of equality it's not that somebody is more respected and somebody is not respected all live a life of equality so those animals you know they all live a life of equality and are always happy with what they get their simple aim happens to be just to to get their uh, stomachs filled with something and the moment it is done they are so satisfied that at the very instance they go to sleep not one is respectable or unhappy over the whole earth means so all the animals you know they uh, they don't uh, they, they don't show respect to one or the other because all are of same kinds unlike the unlike it is the case in uh, amongst the human beings because when you talk about human beings and among them somebody is greatly respected and somebody is uh, you know uh, disregarded so why is somebody greatly respected again the point is either for one's influence or because of one's uh, you know uh, economic status and all if somebody is has got a lot of money if somebody has been able to amass a huge wealth then you respect him and otherwise you, you don't even bother like how does the poor man look like so but these things don't happen with animals so they show their relations to me and i accept them so they show their relation to me so the animals you know they uh, the kind of life the animals live the life which is devoid of any show of the life which is you know bereft of any uh, ego or greed or falsehood that life you know when i see i accept that life which they show to me so the kind of relation they show to me because of the kind of behavior they uh, exhibit i accept the relation with animals they bring me tokens of myself they evince them plainly in their positions so they bring uh, so they bring me tokens of me so they bring their so they bring me tokens of myself so what are the tokens we usually say it's a token of love token we usually take in take it as some uh, you know symbol of token of love token of remembrance token of reverence but here token refers to the qualities which they possess so they show their so they bring me tokens of myself so the qualities which we have talked about uh, uh, talked uh, which are possessed by animals the qualities of uh, being placid of being self contained of being uh, uncomplaining of being uh, you know uh, conscious of their you know deeds of being you know uh, remaining fair of be of remaining satisfied and all so these all qualities were actually uh, shared by both men and animals earlier the point is like earlier man was also calm peaceful self satisfied was not greedy he lived a natural life he did not have to bother about what would happen tomorrow so even man lived that life earlier and today man has forgotten all these things and today if you want like what kind of life is actually exemplary then that will be shown by the animals so they bring me tokens of myself so the animals have shown me what actually the real life is so the animals have shown me like what are the intrinsic characteristics of a human life what are the intrinsic characteristics of a human life these ones which we have mentioned earlier love affection truthfulness contentment honesty simplicity courage kindness these all you know are the tokens of humanity also and these all virtues have been uh, the poet has been able to realize that man's life man's uh, the characteristic features of a man are these and the animals have shown me the, these things to him they bring me tokens of myself so the animals have shown me like what kind of life a human being should live they have shown me the kind of qualities i as human being need to possess and uh, and they evince them plainly in their possession so they 
evince them plainly in their possession so those very animals you know they show these animals they show these qualities they show they have evolved themselves with those very qualities so if you talk about anim animals then you cannot uh, uh, talk about animals in the absence of these things so animals have these qualities these qualities are shown plainly in their behavior i wonder where they get those tokens did i pass that way huge times ago and negligently drop them so i wonder where they get those tokens from where have the animals been able to collect those qualities which were part and parcel of human life and I, and the poet really wonders and the poet is really shocked the way the human beings have been able to forget or drop those qualities which were intrinsic part of his life also did i pass that way huge times ago so did i forget those qualities a long back ago or did i uh, carelessly drop them somewhere the point of this line is that the poet wonders or is shocked at the loss of human values among human beings did i pass that way huge times ago or negligently drop them so uh, the qualities which are being talked about over here they are uh, being used as uh, something which which is uh, you know very concrete so here the poet is talking about these qualities as something very very uh, concrete so poetic device is so the point is the poet says that the that the qualities which animals are still proud of those qualities were a part of human life as well but but with the passage of time the human beings started becoming greedy uh, or uh, or what we say dissatisfied or uh, he started liking or he started uh, you know remaining tensed and stressed with his uh, desires for tomorrow and he, and he all and he forgot how to live a life of simplicity and 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 natural so the more he started becoming fearful the more he started uh, you know praying god the more he started praying his ancestors because of the fear which was lurking inside him and that fear was because of his loss of conscience and why did his conscience got lost because he indulged more in more in dishonest ways of life so the poet says that instead of living this kind of life i think i could take turn and live with animals so he says like instead of being a man without virtues it's better to live a life of virtues as animals so even animals are better than man this is what poet wants to conclude as okay so that's it the poem has come to an end so it was only the plain description i have given you tomorrow we'll be doing this poem again from the poetic devices point of view and the other intrinsic features we'll be discussing tomorrow so what you people will do today is uh there are four questions go through them okay tomorrow we'll be discussing these questions also would that be fine let me check attendance Okay. Okay, children. We'll see you tomorrow at this very time.